Hi friends, hope you are fine. Why we have different kinds of vectors? Let's take the case of plasmid. Plasmid is one of the most common gene cloning vector with an insert size of 6 to 15 KB. So it can accommodate a small DNA fragment. The prime reason for different types of vectors is the DNA insert size. Now we have phage vectors that can accommodate up to 25 KB, then cosmid approximately 35 KB, then back up to 300 KB and finally we have yak that can accommodate 2000 KB. So the prime reason for having different types of vectors is to accommodate large DNA fragments for different scientific procedures like genome sequencing. In this video we will be discussing what is a vector, what are the minimum requirement of a vector and a brief description of all these vectors within 5 to 10 minutes. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing this channel. Let's begin with the definition of a vector. A vector is simply a DNA molecule that is capable of replicating inside the host to which our dessert gene is inserted for cloning. Let us understand this better. It is simply a dessert DNA carrier. Suppose we have gene X and we need to transform this gene X into this host bacterium. For that we need a carrier DNA molecule and that is the vector. The most common vector is plasmid. What we do is we make a cut in the plasmid using restriction enzymes and join our desired gene into the vector using lysis, and we'll be having a recombinant DNA molecule and this is transferred into the host organism. Here vector acts as a gene carrier or desert gene carrier. Hope this much is clear. Now the second point, what is the minimum requirement of a vector? So this is a genetically engineered plasmid based vector which is called as PPR322. The first essentiality is ORI or origin of replication. It is a sequence that is essential for replicating inside the host organism. Then the second feature is selectable markers. Here you can see two selectable markers, this ampicillin resistant region and tetracycline resistance region. These are actually gene sequences but that provides ampicillin resistance property or tetracycline resistance property. We have given a simple video on how selectable markers helps in selection of colonies you can refer that for more and the third feature is the presence of restriction sites and restriction sites should be within the selectable markers also that helps in selection of transformed colonies by insertional inactivation we can refer this video for more so these are the minimum requirement of a vector an ori selectable markers and unique restriction sites within selectable markers. Let's move into the first vector, the most common one that is plasmid. As you see plasmids are extra chromosomal double stranded circular DNA molecule that is present in bacteria. Genetically engineered plasmids are widely used as gene cloning vectors. We have already discussed this PBR322, it is having an ORI, then two selectable markers, this ampicillin resistance region and tetracycline resistance region then there are many unique restriction sites and also restriction sites within selectable markers. So it's a modified plasmid that is used as gene cloning vector with an insert size of approximately 6 to 15 KB. This helps in protein expression inside the host. The advantage is plasmid is it is easy to handle. It is stable and it can easily replicate inside the host. The major disadvantage is it can carry only small fragments to the maximum of 15 KB. The next vector is phage vectors. Bacteriophages are viruses that attacks bacteria. The most common one are lambda phage vectors and M13 phage vectors. What is happening is this phage will attach to the bacterial surface and inject its phage DNA 
if it is a lysogenic cycle that will integrate into the bacterial genome. So what we do is in the case of lambda phage vectors, this is the lambda DNA molecule and there is a region that is not essential for phage infection and replication inside the host and that region is replaced with our gene of interest. So this is the gene of interest. So this non-essential region is replaced with our gene of interest and that is packaged in vitro and allowed to infect this bacteria so that this phage genome is having our desired DNA fragment. So phage acts as a vector. So here recombinant phages are, bacteriophages are used as gene cloning vectors. Insert size is slightly more than plasmid up to 25 kb. Host is bacteria. Application is protein expression. Advantage is it is easy to handle and there is high transformation efficiency as this undergoes a natural infection process by a recombinant phage. The major disadvantage here also is the DNA insert size is very small. The next vector is cosmid. As the term indicates it is having the cos site of lambda phage plus plasmid. That makes cosmid a hybrid vector. So this is a hybrid vector that just works like a plasmid inside bacterium. It is having cos site of lambda phage. Cos site means the cohesive end or sticky ends of lambda phage. As you see this vector is having cos site then restriction, restriction sites then selectable marker and an ORI. What we do is we will be using the restriction site to open this vector and we will be inserting our gene of interest between these cos sites. So our gene of interest is inserted here between these cos sites and that is packaged in vitro into the phage and that phage will be allowed to infect bacteria just like phage vectors. This genome is having two cos sites so inside the bacterium this will rejoin this cos site means cohesive ends with single stranded sticky ends that will combine to form a circular DNA molecule just like a bacterial plasmid so cosmid acts as a plasmid inside bacteria because of the presence, presence of cos site Insert size is 45 kb, host is bacterium. There are different cosmid vectors like PRK290, SuperCos1, etc. It's good for cloning large genes. It's widely used in the making of cDNA and genomic libraries. Advantage is large DNA insert size compared to plasmid and other phage vectors. Disadvantage is here also maximum DNA insert size is 45 kb or phage packaging limitation that is 45 kb and so these are often unstable inside E. coli. Now we have mega vectors or vectors that can accommodate large DNA fragment. First one is a back vector or bacterial artificial chromosome vector. So as you see it is a vector that is based on F plasmid or fertility plasmid of E. coli with an insert size of 150 to 350 kb. It is having an ORI of E. coli, then selectable marker region like chloramphenicol resistance region, then two promoters T7 and SP6 promoters with many restriction sites. Then there is a rep E sequence that is essential for initiation and assembly of replication complex. Then there are two sequences PARA and PARB that is needed for movement of back to daughter cells or daughter bacterium. The host is bacteria. Examples include P back 108 L. So this is what is happening. A bacterial F plasmid that is cut within the lacquer gene region with the restriction enzyme and the gene of interest is inserted into that region and this back vector is transferred into host by electroporation. Then the recombinant colonies are selected by blue white screening so we have given a short video on blue white screening you can refer that for more how the selection occurs 
application is of course these are mega vectors so it can clone large DNA fragments so for the making of cDNA and genomic libraries it is used in human genome project it's more stable than yak and it is easy to manipulate compared to yak the major disadvantage of this back vector is compared to yak which is having a 2000 kb insert size back is having a small insert size in comparison to yak vectors and finally we have yak vectors or yeast artificial chromosome vectors yeast artificial chromosome vectors as you see it is a mega vector that can accommodate up to 3000 kb it is having an ori of yeast which is called as autonomously replicating sequence then there is a send region or centromeric region or yeast centromere that is responsible for movement of yak to daughter cells then there are two telomeric regions various selectable markers is trp1 sup4 ura ampicillin resistance regions etc and there are many restriction sites within selectable markers so what is happening with yak is inside the host or inside the yeast this vector acts just like yeast chromosome it's a linear vector so as you see there are two telomeric regions so uh, we'll be making a cut in the restriction site and we will be inserting our gene of interest within this region and inside the host inside the yeast it just acts like a yeast chromosome with two telomeres and this centromeric region as this vector can accommodate large dna fragment it is widely used in the construction of physical maps in sequencing projects at first yak vector is widely used in human genome project later due to its instability yak vectors are replaced with pack in human genome project the major advantage is large insert size so we have given a video on difference between yak and pack you can refer that for more the major disadvantage with yak is it is less stable compared to pack therefore it is replaced in human genome project with back the major disadvantage is yak often produce chimeric effects or many unwanted overlapping sequences and that is about different types of vectors if you find this video useful please consider subscribing this channel thank you so much for your support you are with biologyexamsforyou.com